Space Adventures. In this issue, Transformation, the hard-hitting story of scientists' most recent revelation. Transformation, as defined in Webster's Dictionary, to change the form of, specifically, to change in outward form or semblance, to change in structure or composition. Sometime later, Dr. Lars Cranston, director of the World Medical Center of New York City, hands his sweetheart a list of the foremost names on the roster of international doctors and scientists. Have them in my office at 11 sharp, Betty. I, for one, do not intend to have any part of this war. There's little chance of survival, and for the few who live, there'll be only a gutted radioactive planet left. I share your views, Doctor Cranston, but how? This war will be fought with atom hydrogen weapons. Dr. Cranston, no one will be spared. That's precisely the point I had in mind. I'm thinking of the experimental rocket, recently completed by the center. It's capable of a trip into outer space, large enough to carry over a ton of equipment, instruments, radar and TV communication units. I propose to substitute men for communication equipment, food, and provisions for scientific instruments. With this rocket we could go to Venus or Mars and live in peace. I've already ordered the changes made in the rocket. How many of you are with me? I'm with you, Cranston. And I... When can we start? Later in the afternoon. Lars, may I see you a moment? Why? Yes, dear, what is it? You left the switch open on the intra-office communicator this afternoon. I heard your plans. Take me with you. I love you too much to let you risk your life alone. No. We have no idea what will await us on the other world. Betty. Or if we can even manage to get there in the first place. I can take that chance too. Besides, as you said, it's better than waiting for an atom bomb to drop. Take me with you. Or... Or I'll expose your plan. Very well. I tried to keep it from you. We plan to take off early Sunday morning. Dawn Sunday morning. At last, we thought something had detained you. The others are aboard already. Where's Betty? She's aboard too. The ship is in a clearing just ahead. We are set to take off. A few moments later. According to my calculations, we'll enter Mars' gravitational field. In 17 more hours. That sounds about right. I'm going back to the laboratory. What are you doing in here, Betty? Admiring. It's a beautiful setup. It's like you to bring a first-class lab along with you. You do a good job of everything, don't you, Lars? I try to. You like to play the big silent guy. Lars, which is okay with me, up to a point. You're going to have a long time to think of something to say to a gal when we start living on Mars. And it'll be the only one around. Hum, kind of sure of herself. Maybe she is right though. It will be kind of lonesome with only the five of us there. Later, as the rocket nears the red planet. Altitude. 23 miles descension rate, 1200 feet. Per second outside air friction, 3.8%. Start reversing the position of the enemy ship at 20 miles. Altitude. 
altitude, 30,000 feet, rate, 400 miles per hour. Increase your rocket power at 2,000 feet. To start reducing speed, pour it on gradually. Our dissension rate must reach zero at an altitude of one foot. Will the cut the switches and drop to the surface? Cranston, the, the throttles have gone dead. We're falling. We're a thousand feet up. Lay flat in the floor and brace yourselves for a crash landing. Betty, back in the living compartments. Must warn her, go into crash. For a long time after the impact, there is total silence. And then... Where? Where am I? I... I don't remember anything. Oh, brother, the daddy of all headaches. Wonder if anyone else came through the crash alive. What a mess, all of them charred together into one single remain. Well, I've done the best I can. Strangely enough, the center of the rocket seems to be intact. The tail section was demolished when it took the brunt of the fall. The lab, I wonder. It's in pretty good condition at that. Funny thing about impact, this fragile measuring cup is okay while some of the more sturdy metal machinery is wrecked. Dr. Cranston lived in what was left of the ship. From what was left of the provisions, days, weeks, and months went by. He tired of exploring his surroundings. I'll go nuts by myself here if I'm not careful. I'll try working in the lab. Months of loneliness can produce strange fixations in the most brilliant minds. These notes on sex conversion, the transformation from male to female of the human being an interesting experiment take a long time to accomplish. But I've got a lot of time. Anyway, I'm a little tired of being a man. Men start wars and build rockets to escape from them. Men would in short seem to be rather stupid creatures. Poor Betty. Because of us she's dead. I think I'll. Yes. I'll do it. Then I'll destroy the lab. Anyway. I haven't much hope of living very long on this godforsaken planet. This hormone shot will start the treatment. I've a lot of studying to do. And it will take a long time. At least this work will be an obstacle to insanity. Meanwhile, another survivor has wandered halfway around the small, red planet in the months since the crash of Dr. Cranston's ship. In the year that followed, the crisis on Earth was controlled by the democratic nations. The all-out war that had Dr. Cranston and his followers to escape was averted. Eventually life on Earth returned to normal, and again Mars was studied by astronomers, their telescopes probed the clear planet, but none were powerful enough to observe the conclusion of the drama being played on its surface. The day finally came when understanding returned to Betty Stone. Now, I remember, the crash, I'm on Mars, or should be. But where are the others? For many days, the girl wandered across the face of the alien planet in search of her own kind. I can't keep on much longer if I could only find the rocket. The, the ship, and I see someone moving around it. Someone is still alive. Oh, if only it's Lars. Betty! What? Who the devil are you? I was the only woman. Where is Dr. Cranston? I am... I'm Cranston. 
I've undergone a transformation of sex by my own hand. The others, all dead, were the last alive. But, but Betty, I didn't know. Trans formation. Oh no. No, no. <laughs> The end. <laughs> <laughs>